two days ago, unrest broke out in Juba in South Sudan. I have uh, three South Sudanese uh, nationals with me just to make sense of what is happening in their home country. We have uh, John Pen Dengong. He's a South Sudanese activist. We also have Daniel Yordeng. He's the chairman of the South Sudan Peace Coalition. And Duck Booth. He's uh, the co-chair of the Congress for South Sudanese Patriots. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. Uh, John, let me start with you. Did you expect this to be how you celebrate five years of independence? Now, it's a great disappointment. We were waiting to go out on the fifth anniversary on the streets of Nairobi celebrating. But when we went to our embassy this morning, it turned out to be gloomy. Of course, we got the warning yesterday and the day before yesterday. So we got the day messed up. Instead of celebrating, we are seeing them now collecting bodies on the street. And by warning, what did you mean by that? You were told that this could happen? Yeah, we were following uh, their activities, the events of the soldiers on the street. Mm -hmm. There's no security arrangement, no good security, so they clashed. And they clashed even in front of the president of the co-president, I mean vice president and first vice president. Uh, now, Daniel, uh, there was uh, a reason given by the government that there wasn't enough funds to carry out celebrations for the fifth anniversary. You didn't buy that at all and instead saw it as what exactly? I, I, I think to hear that it was a challenge to me mm. because I do not uh, cooperate what is the connection of fun and celebration mm -hmm. because celebration is something that you can just do it right as a national as a national uh, nationalism patriotism you can go and celebrate if you want to celebrate you can go to your house so it was a surprise to me to hear that there is no fun uh, so i do not understand exactly unless i ask from them so i myself i am in the dilemma i'm in dilemma to, to, to hear such a news. And some people feel, Duck, that uh, it really is uh, a failure by Rick Machar and Salva Kiir to show a face of unity on a day that the country is to mark five years of independence. Well, of course, Victoria, I think before I answer that, I would have to give my condolences to uh, people of, who have perished in that there's clashes yesterday. And uh, some of the people who died, though they're soldiers, are people we know personally. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I said I have to say these televisions they have to rest in peace. Uh, in relation to whether they are fail or not, I think it is it is, it is evidence and it is in public domains because if they had not failed, the country would not be where it is today. We have a refugee state. You remember we have 2.5 million people displaced in the country, right. leave alone those who have fled, leave alone us, and 70 you know thousand people died. So that alone, you know. You cannot attribute it to something else other than the failure of the two. So, of course, it is a failure. You uh, mentioned some displaced uh, individuals. Some are your family members who are in displaced camps. Of course, of course, what yeah. do they say the situation is like right now? The uh, situation is, is always fragile. Uh, you remember, even if you go to the UN compound, <laughs> someone can just walk in and shoot, you, mm -hmm. shoot people. and There's no accountability. So, so it is very sad. It's every day, you, you know, when, when they're waking up, mm -hmm. they don't know what's it's like, what is going to happen in the next hour. So even if you run to the UN compound, you know, this, the ma 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 marauding soldiers yeah. could always go there and shoot them. You don't know whether they do it at will or, or they are told to do the same. So even if they're in a neutral space, their safety is not guaranteed, yes. is what you're saying? Yes. Currently, if you are in South Sudan, you are not safe. Okay. That has to be told. Okay. And, and those who are in South Sudan, if you if if someone is doubting this, can 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 see can can, can check with, with uh, the Now, John, earlier today you were asking for swift implementation of the peace agreement that was signed. What do you think is hindering the implementation of this peace process? One, um, the leaders have not accepted to come together to share power. They're the same state where they broke up. They can't share it. They can't trust themselves. There's lack of trust. And then the process of the agreement is in such a way that it was forced on them. Mm -hmm. the, you heard them complaining a lot, even Kir signed like 10 days later, and Machar is complaining and all this. So these guys cannot, are not compatible from day one, but they are being forced to implement on, on behalf of other people, against their will. Right. So they're not compatible. Some would say, why not rely on uh, the Constitution, for instance? Would that work? The Constitution is almost the character of one person. The constitution brought this war. They broke up in the whole. How, how so did it, how did it start the war? Oh, in 2013, that's December, on the 14th and 15th, mm -hmm. they were negotiating the constitution. 
The other one is saying we vote, we vote uh, through the Cowan system, like this. Others say secret ballots, others say hey, hey, and all this. So, and the succession problem in the SPLM, which leads to the government. Mm -hmm. So in the constitution itself, there's a mess. And Keir, uh, the president, uses that constitution to fire elected officials, like governors elected by the people. Even now he's appointing MPs for the 28 states that he decreed. So the constitution favors Salva Kiir, is what yes, you're saying? Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's a one-man constitution. Mm -hmm. He fires a person I voted for. It's like somebody with a status like Kiir. And, yeah. and, and Daniel, for you, um, he mentioned, John mentioned the issue of mistrust between the two main parties uh, in now the transitional uh, government of unity. How do you develop or build that trust between the two? Because they need to work together to make it work and bring back peace. I think for them to come back to the same government, it was a win-win to me. Mm -hmm. It was not uh, something that you can, you can enjoy because this cake you bought and the international community plus the region, they have seen each and every one among them up to take a small share. So for them right now, the lack of political will, the lack of trust, the lack of uh, uh, being a, a, a patriot, sometimes it, 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 it cause all this mess. Mm -hmm. Since the time when Machar went back to Juba, there is challenges. They failed to address the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have been done. They failed to, 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 to visit the IDP and it is something that would have been done. Mm -hmm. They failed to, to do, to, to, to win the mind of the people. So all the people now in South Sudan, they are in dilemma with them because uh, whatever they follow, they follow the interests of, by themselves, mm -hmm. and then they put the interests of the people, they suppress the interests of the people. So to me, I see that it's a lack of, uh, uh, lack of political will in, in, in them. Right. Yeah. And, and Doug, do you feel that the agreement uh, is just words on a piece of paper and does not mean much in terms of the two main leaders, Mashar and Kier, to actually make it happen on the ground? Well, uh, the agreement, at first I was not concerned to that agreement as a, as a person. But South Sudan is not, a, is not a light, an island. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we have to understand, we have to agree with what the members had, 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 had said. So uh, it is indeed true. Um, there is, it is, it is just a paper, because you remember even for Mashar to go in, even after he signs it, it, it takes, takes out, it takes right. even, you know, a month or many weeks, and, and the presidents had to work out the meeting. So I don't know, it is very difficult for us to say, now these people have to go back to the table, because a lot of resources were, you know, used mm -hmm. in arriving to that decision. Right. Uh, I think there is need for a concerted effort at the moment. That is why we came out on the street today and demand these people to, to, do, to, to actually do what is required of them. And uh, if they don't, what is the alternative if they don't? Because already they're showing signs of not wanting to If reconcile. they don't, if they don't, even us, even the, the people you see here have a liberation story, have a liberation history. So, so, so I know even signing it was not a panacea of, of actually, you know, uh, know, getting the, the loss that we've actually incurred. So if they don't, then we will, we will still go to the field mm. and, and, and use, you know, all the, the, the powers at, at our disposals, including empowering ourselves, you know, and be able to liberate our country from the, so that is the bottom line. We will never say, we'll never close our eyes and say now, oh, we have failed. That, that, that will never happen. It is, it is, it is a luta continua. We will continue to, to seek peace and unity. How, how would you actually make that happen? Because some uh, people see it as you're the diaspora in South Sudanese. Yes. Um, how would your efforts here, outside of the country's borders, actually help in changing things? What we are doing at the moment, even what we did today at the embassy, is part of sensitizing the community mm -hmm. to tell them we want peace. We wanted unity. We are telling them what our commonalities are. So by realizing that they're able to, they'll be able to, to realize these people are, are using them, are setting them against each other for their own benefit. So we are sensitive, giving them, in, giving them informations, you know, you know, and once they have the informations, uh, then they are, they are empowered. You remember the, the challenges is that we have a population that is, cannot be able to read and write. Mm -hmm. So that gives these groups an advantage to maneuver. You know, to tell take them advantage, of, take advantage of yeah. our literacy. So we the groups, uh, the, the few people, 
uh, have a responsibility, legal and moral responsibility, to sensitize our, our people, to okay. tell them what they should do. And, and John, would you then say, because you also have said earlier that the problem is the two leaders, Salva Kiir and Riek Machar, should they leave office? And what would be the alternative? Who would be the neutral voice in this to bring the country together? There are two key players in this case. I'm not telling uh, the world or anybody they leave the office today. There must be a mechanism. Mm -hmm. There must be a constitution, a transition, an exit strategy. But uh, they were put together in such a way that they go away together or come in together, as you saw it. Mm -hmm. In 2014, when I was in Addis Ababa, the civil society pushing for this peace agreement, right. uh, Kiri leaked the discussion that uh, IGAD wants to let them step aside and wait until 2015, both of them. And he jumped to the parliament and declared what he calls the red line. And uh, they discussed only from his behind, that is uh, the vice president, downwards. Mm -hmm. His position was not attached. So they had to bring Machar in because without Machar, together with Kir, we can't go ahead. So now, uh, as you see, the way forward is the South Sudanese people themselves should be the one pressurizing these people. They have not given us the space to do this. That's why we do it even in Nairobi. But these people should be the one pr giving pressure by withdrawing their support. The support is what? I supply them with manpower, the fodder of war, which is the, the youth, to right. fight themselves. Right. If I withdraw my support so that I don't fight for them, they will tussle it out with, uh, among themselves like they were inside yesterday. They didn't fight. But those who were right outside fought. So we withdraw. Then the region should come in. The region that brought them together should continue. Yamag is uh, either ignoring or snoring. I don't know. They're sitting as people are fighting. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, there's also the issue of the two um, ethnic groups, the Dinka and the Nuer. And that has been at least at the base of a lot of this conflict. How do you reconcile the two groups? We are together. It is Machar and Riyak and, 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 and Kir that are not together. We are together. Today we... So the people are together, it's just the leaders who this do not dark. see we eye to never eye. Fought. Our people are together in the field. Even during the war, there would be people, uh, some young people from Jongle State, my, my state, mm -hmm. going to Nuer land to sell cattle uh, illegally. And uh, I say illegal because the government did not want that, but they would be traitors. Right. So we are together today, we were in the rally, in, in the protest. We are together in Juba, in schools, in, in, in many places. Now, I wonder, Daniel, if the problem started from the beginning, because you have a government that was first a military force in fighting for independence from Sudan that now became South Sudan. And just the struggle of having to transition from being militarized to governing a dem democratic country, do you think that has been the problem? I think that is a problem in uh, transition, because uh, the majority of people, especially, they call themselves liberators. Uh, some who were fighting C-1983. Uh, others, there were those who were in Khartoum, mm -hmm. those who said we fought within. There uh, were others who went to Abroad. These people, they... The they, they, what, they, yeah. Yeah. they make themselves, they are the intellectual. So when you brought these uh, three groups together, mm -hmm. uh, there is that wrangling, uh, challenges, and they say we are the liberators. We have to uh, to do it. Mm -hmm. We know why do we fought. The same within the liberators. Uh, they have that kind of uh, betrayal. Okay. They say some of this and the other one, they betray the movement. Mm -hmm. And this causes a lot of friction sometimes. Okay. The language which is being used, sometimes it have a repercussion, mm -hmm. especially when uh, uh, this war okay in uh, 2013. There was that language between Kir and uh, Dr. Machar because Machar left the movement and then he came back right. because of disagreement between Machar and Garang. Mm -hmm. But they were reconciled until they signed the agreement in uh, 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 2005. So if we want to move forward, mm -hmm. we have to forget about this and give you or give me what I know to do it. If my specialization is on military, I have to go with it, and then I will be respected on that side. If I have that uh, intellectuality, mm -hmm. I will be given that area. So second of it, we have a lack of constitution, because constitutional and have not uh, uh, divided the, the role. Right. So we don't know who to do, who we command. It, everything is being commanded. So, so all groups need to see um, a way to work together and using their strengths to actually bring lasting peace to South Sudan. That's all the time we have. Thank you so much, John, Daniel, and Doug, and we hope that we see a peaceful South Sudan very, very soon.